that's where they took her After our wedding bells And I was thinking to myself I could be walking straight into hell Then I whipped out a candle A bag of coins just fell out Didn't think this could get much stranger Than the mom and shout Welcome to this castle, Castlevania It's spectacular Homo Dracula Greetings Internet and Happy Halloween. Welcome to another episode of A Comedy Musician Reacts. My name is Insane Ian. I am a comedy musician and comedy music fan. And yes, I am a comedy musician. That song you saw in the intro is my brand new track for Halloween, Dungeon Castlevania. You can pick that up wherever you find music. If you go to my band camp, you can also get this awesome poster of the single image. Uh, done by my friend Corey Kramer. Anyway, this week we will be reacting to three new songs by the Merkins, which is a band who do horror movie influenced parody. Uh, I've reacted to a couple of songs there of theirs before on this channel. Uh, this week they released a new Slash Street Boys, which is their boy band made up of slashers. This is Keep Slingin' Teens in the Dark, I assume a parody of Quit Playing Games with My Heart. After that is uh, the song that came out previous to that one, which is Mostly Cruel with Kill Kill Kill, which I assume is a parody of Motley Crue's Girls Girls Girls. And, uh, and before that, the song that came out prior to that one, which is Ghostface doing an Adele parody with Hello Sydney. But... Uh, before we get into that, please, if you could, like, share, comment, subscribe, do all the things that the algorithm pr asks you to do. Make sure you hit the bell to get the notifications of when I release these. I usually do these on Fridays, but this week, obviously, I had a new song that came out on Friday. And uh, I might be having another video coming out tomorrow, actually, on Halloween. But uh, all of that said, uh, you know, if you want to get my music early, get these videos early before they hit the web for everybody else, you can check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash insaneian. I think I've gotten through everything I'm supposed to get through. Let's actually get to the videos now and the reactions because it's the spooky season. For 15 years I've been obsessed to find out what was going on inside of him. <laughs> There's something really funny automatically about the dichotomy of a, a horror guy, uh, a, a slasher, one of the killers from the movies, dressed up in boy band apparel, but still wearing the horror movie mask and carrying a knife. Already that's funny. Slicking back the wig's hair, yeah. <laughs> Doing the the boy band thing of making sure you're hitting the note without all the pop singers do it. It's completely unnecessary. Don't it? Yeah, but I, obviously they're they're parodying that, and uh, often they use clips from the movies. I don't know if these are actually clips from the movies. They may have reshot a lot of things for this, so that's cool. Yeah. I see. Stabbing just to hear you scream. Choke <laughs> you with the phone. I'll kill. Lomas thinks he's stopping me. Six times he shot me good. <laughs> but I'm fine. Unstoppable on Halloween. They, they did clearly reshoot these scenes. They're not using clips from the movie in this one. Uh, you got to admire them sticking to their theme. All the killers always do songs specific to their franchise, um, but mixing them into these uh, pop song parodies and, and metal parodies and what have you, uh, they, they, they stay consistent with it. Uh, y you got to appreciate that kind of... Uh, dedication to a craft but I wish I could just have keep playing teens in the dark <laughs> 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 
before I puncture your heart. So who do we have? We've got Leatherface. We've got Freddy in the back. That's Michael Myers up front, looking a little, more, a little bit more haggard. I think they, they uh, Leatherface and, and Michael Myers have paint under their eyes. Uh, Ghostface from Scream, and of course Jason. Uh, at Nice, uh, looking at the, the jersey numbers, that would be the year that their franchises premiered. Leatherface has a 74. Uh, it looks like Michael Myers has a 78. Jason has an 80. I can only assume that uh, uh, Freddy's is an 84 and uh, Ghostface's is a 90. Just guessing. No, 96. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I forgot that that came out so much later in the 90s. Um, Scream 5, which I'm just calling Scream, comes out in the spookiest month ever, January. Number one, stop calling your sequels the same title. Put a number there, please. Unless it's a reboot, and this one's not, you're just going to have to refer to it as Scream 2022. Like we refer to Halloween, the sequel to Halloween, as Halloween 2018 or 2016 or whenever the hell it came out. Halloween Kills is out this year, and then Halloween Ends is after that. Sure, that follows a theme, but Halloween followed by Halloween. Stop it. Anyway, rant over. Let's continue. I was a clown at the start. Yes, because Michael Myers, when he was a er, yeah, Michael Myers when he was a kid, stabbed his sister when he was dressed as a great little clown. He was like six. Yes. Uh, Psycho from start. Yeah, wow. Bleh. Franchise consistency. <laughs> Casey, meaning the Drew Barrymore part. I guess. I think her name was Casey, but there obviously there's a picture of Drew Barrymore with an X out. That was that was one of the coolest things about the Scream franchise is you've got this big star in the opening and you're like, oh, they're not going to kill off the big name star. Drew Barrymore was one of the most famous people in that movie up to that point. You know, Nev Campbell and, and, and Courtney Cox and all the others had done movies, but Drew was the biggest name and they offed her in the opening scene. Spoiler alert if you haven't seen Scream. Obviously. Uh, but, uh, you know, and then they kind of went through that consistently through the other movies. Uh, I haven't seen Scream 4, unfortunately. Uh, but, uh, yeah, this is, a uh, again, working on that theme of each slasher. And uh, also always surprising when these uh, murderous killers have lovely singing voices. VHS. <laughs> that's that's a great line. Sometimes I wish I could FaceTime, but my Motorola is obsolete. That is the first like legitimately funny line uh, I've heard in in these songs in, in a very long time. Because while they're writing along the theme, uh, the the jokes are really really strong if you're familiar with the franchise and the scream Ghostface Killer always uses like those old flip phones because those movies took place in the 90s and the late, you know, early 2000s. So obviously, yeah, you can't FaceTime on that. And I'll it cut to the shot of the VHSs of Scream. Um, all of these movies came out on VHS because they're the 80s and 90s. Uh, I really appreciate, you know, humor that, you know, hits on things that are helpful if you're even if you're not familiar with the franchise because he's holding up a Motorola so you can see that his phone is not going to have FaceTime on it and it, it one of the things of this song is is working on the theme is they're all singing to their final girl too you know that's that's the biggest thing about these horror franchises is there's always a final girl the final girl is the one who who usually stops the killer um 
and it's you know it's it's Nancy in the Friday the Thirteenth movie or uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. It's Laurie Strode in, in in Halloween. It's I don't remember the name of the girl in the Jason movies in in the Friday the Thirteenth films because it it changes each one. Um, but I know Nancy's the big one for at least for the first two uh, uh, Nightmare on Elm Streets. Uh, Laurie is throughout the franchise of Halloween, uh, and Sydney is throughout the franchise of Scream. Hence why. A scream song, two songs from now, will be about Sydney again. And Texas Chainsaw, I uh, that no, I haven't I haven't really seen too much of that one. I know it through pop culture. I just don't know the names of the characters other than Leatherface because the Leatherface of the franchise. These are words that I've said. Okay. Neff Campbell. Stu better. <laughs> Stu better keep slaying teens in the dark. Stu was one of the killers in the first movie. It, there were two killers, and that's kind of one of the things that's kind of happened in the franchise. It's that sometimes it ends up being two killers. Uh, so that, you know, if you're suspecting one person, it's actually two people who's able to move when the other one is doing something else to kind of get the heat off of them. Um, at least for the first two movies. I don't think they did that with the third one. Um, and I haven't seen the fourth one. But. A lot of people are hoping that Stu survived the first movie and is the killer in Scream 5 or Scream 2022 uh, because it's Matt Lillard and everybody, you know, everybody loves Matt Lillard. He's great. Uh, he's the voice of Shaggy now after playing the live action Shaggy in the movies. And he's a great guy. He's really cool on Twitter. And he's been dropping weird little hints about the franchise. So people are like thinking that these are nods to the fact that my his character might be coming back. Honestly, I don't think it's going to be that, because if it was, they wouldn't be letting him do that. But maybe, we don't know. I won't know until January, the scariest month of ever. It's my birth month, come on. Well, so you got to admire the choreography. <laughs> The Jiffy Pop. Gotta really admire the production quality in this video, too. A lot of their songs, because they are either using clips from the old movies or because they're aping a style from an older genre, like for... Uh, the next song it may be in you know not widescreen because that was the style of the original music video so they're trying to do that again they did that with the uh the man in the box pinhead song they did and they did that with the uh uh freddy's paradise gangster's paradise song so yeah uh dreamer's paradise not freddy's dreamer's paradise so uh yeah you're, you're gonna see like aspect ratio change and because this was a you know late 2000s uh, pop song, it's in widescreen because that's how those videos were shot. And the production value between the choreography and the, the sets for the solo lines <clears throat> and all the lines of the slashers chasing their final girls, they've shot all that completely and, and the production quality of it is looking really, really good. And you, that's one of the things, like I've said many times, in in comedy music videos you want that to you want the video to elevate your lyrics not detract from them so uh i i think that's giving a really good quality behind not only the production of the song but the production of the videos here it's really good of course jason singing to his mom instead of a final girl, because his mom was the killer in the first movie. She was there to to kill the counselors because the counselors years ago uh, were busy off fornicating uh, so that uh, her, her son Jason drowned, and she was the killer in the first movie, and all ever since he's the killer in the other movies because he came back from the dead, and it's a weird franchise. All slasher movies are weird franchises when they have a returning killer who's the same person. Oh. 
<laughs> oh, that's so good. Because in in the, all the movies after the first one, the ch 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 ha 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 is kill 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 ma ma ma. Uh, that's that's so genius. That's really good. Wow. <laughs> His birthday. But I wish I learned to swing <laughs> I love the choreography. I, I, I can't deny it. You know I'll never stop till I puncture your heart. That's just... That's just a great line for a song about a slasher who's trying to kill you. It, you know, it just, yeah, it's good. <laughs> that leather head face match is great. <laughs> and running with the chains off. And then pose. So good. Bravo, Merkins. Well done. Co-written by our subscribers. Wow. That's awesome. Bravo to all the cast playing the characters. Jason was huge, man. Jason was good, but Jason's voice was different. That's great. Uh, the, the voice actors and the... Uh, the Slash Street Dancers. <laughs> well, that's great. So so they had different people doing the choreographed dances with the masks on than they did having them play the, the singing ones. That's very funny and a great way to do that. Uh, if you're, you know, if your one actor is not skilled enough in dance, you swap them out. They're all wearing masks, you can't tell. Um, but that's great. These, uh... You really, again, their their production value is really high, and you really have to appreciate the uh, the strength of of their visuals there. So it's quite a production here with uh, a lot of credits. Wow, that's almost a full minute left of credits. Um, we're gonna move on to the next song. No no offense to the people who uh, who worked hard on this production. Your hard work is noted and uh and very appreciated but uh it's hard to react to just credits so we're going to move on to the next song which is the mostly cruel kills 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 which is a parody of girls 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 by motley crew again more slashers more pop parodies but this time hey see and the aspect ratio changes And there's clips from the movies. <laughs> oh my god, the glam metal wigs. Holy crap. There is something about the killer mask with 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 glam metal hair wigs on top. Oh my god, that's funny. Okay. Oh my god. His mask is diamond studded. The the Jason mask has diamonds all over it. Holy crap. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, and all the U's have umlauts over them. Brilliant. Cuz it's Motley Crue and they uh, uh, liberal use of the umlaut. Yes. And, and the, the, the hat on Freddy with the glasses, just, man, the, this is so ridiculous and so good. 
production value is is mostly in the costumes and the the performance capture of them performing the song, aping the way the the uh, Motley Crue video I, I is is I believe. But I couldn't talk there for a second. Aping the way the Motley Crue video is, I believe. Uh, and then intercutting clips from their movies. Ooh, that's a good that's a good rhyme there. I uh, I, I liked that one a lot. Uh, Trick, uh, trick or treat, knife he wields on Halloween in Haddonfield. That's really good. Uh, that's a that's a really good rhyme. I appreciate that one. Knife he wields on Halloween in Haddonfield. Find no girls, you just can't be beat. Just not get sis when you tell Laurie. Girls. But Laurie being uh, Michael's sister has been retconned since the sequel Halloween. Uh, the sequel to the movie Halloween called Halloween Halloween 2018 uh, they've that sequel eliminates 2 through 6 and H2O those movies don't exist in the canon anymore um, so it's the, the order of the movies in the current canon is Halloween followed by Halloween and then Halloween kills and Halloween ends can you tell that this is a this is a sticking point with me that I I don't like when they do that? Cause I have to call it Halloween 2018. Was it 2018 or 2016? I can't remember now. Regardless, that's also the third movie called Halloween because Rob Zombie did a remake of Halloween and it's called Halloween. And I I I I. I, 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 I <laughs> Anyway, we're reacting to a video, aren't we? Skills, skills. At the nut house, he got really pale. Skills, <laughs> skills, skills. Choking babysitters that less inhale. Skills, skills, skills. And, and since Michael Myers is playing Tommy Lee on the drums, he's got earrings, but the earrings are butcher knives. It's touches like that, man, like little subtle things that are really like the worthwhile moments in a comedy video. You know, you can't have, you know, too many jokes because you don't want them to detract from the lyrics that are, the, you know, the main source of the jokes. But having little things like that, that eagle-eyed people will, will catch, are really appreciated. You know, attention to detail in your comedy. That's, that's the important thing, kids. Mask is good. Such a bad, bad boy. I just need to destroy. I, I gotta give it to him. Like the, the, the mask in the Dreamers Paradise video wasn't as articulated or at least not glued down to the performer's face as this one is. This one, the makeup and uh, the makeup mask is really, really well. You can see them mouthing the words or lip syncing very accurately uh, as opposed to that video where it was a little hit or miss. Um, again, production value. I'll tell you what, girl, dream for me. Yes, I'm the real McCoy. Just one. Like the stretch on that line too, real McCoy, real McCoy. I want to get gory. It's it's kind of stretching out the the plausibility of that of that rhyme, but it's still, you know, it's still running on the theme, so it still works. It's a great Freddy moment to choose for that. I didn't even notice the 
the Tommy Lee slash Michael Myers mask. Not only has it does it have earrings and the magnificent mane of glam rock hair, but eyeliner on the mask. Just chef's kiss of attention to detail there. That's fantastic. And also, I will say, every time Ghostface comes up to the mic, he just looks like he's screaming because his mouth is permanently open on the mask. Uh, it's just like coming up to the mic, Aah! whatever, you know, it's... <laughs> <laughs> it's just funny to me. <laughs> That's so good, man. The outfits, the masks. It's a great homage to the original video and the way they did things in that. This is so good, man. Bravo once again to the Americans. That was, uh, that was fantastic. And of course, an umlaut on the E. Motley Mike. That is, that, that was excellent. Co-written by Pixie Lament. Vocals. Vocals, not vocals, vocals. Bravo. And of course, another cast list. It goes on for another full minute. Um, bravo to the people who worked on this and made this. This one was also another excellent one. And finally, we're going to wrap things up with an Adele parody by the Merkins, performed by Ghostface from Scream. It's a parody of Hello! called Hello, Sydney. Hello. <laughs> oh, seeing the eyes behind the mask is kind of creepy, I'll be honest. Sydney. <laughs> I've been suffering Cause after all these years Your mom's a cheat Now it's over if you're not familiar with the Scream movies, a little bit of a spoiler warning. One of the reasons they keep stalking Sydney is that her mother, in the first movie, is that her mother was killed years ago uh, because she was uh, cheating on her husband and uh, her death was mysterious. It was pinned on Cotton Weary, and it turns out it was actually... Uh, Sydney's boyfriend because Sydney's boyfriend Sydney's boyfriend's father was the one that Sydney's mother was cheating with. And then all the other movies have really really stretched thin ties to that event as well. <laughs> all these other people that Maureen hurt. <laughs> um so uh I at least up to 3. Uh again, I haven't seen 4. Um but uh yeah. We're going we're going from 2 pop songs that are fast and peppy and one's kind of a glam rock thing and then we're going to this kind of slower ballad from Adele I slayed that night chose to kill her I hadn't done much killing <laughs> do you fear me wow that's a great I'm sorry that's a great transition from the original line hello can you hear me Hello, do you fear me? That is, for people who know the original song, uh, that's another great point. Uh, a lot of times in parody, parody works mostly on the basis that you know the original song, and uh, some of the jokes tend to be tied in to the fact that this is a parody of that original song, and, and if you're familiarity with that original song, helps move those jokes through really good parody and i'm not saying this is not a really good parody but really good parody in my opinion should work without knowing the original song and i know in my own songs when i do parodies sometimes i don't quite achieve that uh you know you, you have to have that that moment where it stands above the song it's aping you know so you don't have to know the original to get all the jokes in it but knowing the original helps um sometimes I just don't achieve that. Sometimes you have to know the original song 
in this case you have to know the original song for this at least to get that particular line the way it's you know shown against the original line uh at least in my opinion um again not something that's consistent through all parody but uh and not saying that this is not good because this is already very good but uh in in my workings it's something i try to strive for and i know a lot of parody artists either ride that line between achieving that and not achieving that I, I try to make this a little informative as, as far as coming from another comedy musician's perspective that's kind of my deal on this i don't do it in every episode because sometimes it's just good and i, I don't have to point out how good it is because of those things but uh sometimes i feel the need to say things like that this is these are all very excellent but they're all excellent in different ways I'm in California speaking now, it's only you, <laughs> New York number, Sydney, I've forgotten how it hit the floor, my phone fell at your feet, there's no long distance between us, just a million, million dials, miles. instead of miles. That's great. Hello from the other line. It must have run a thousand times. <laughs> That's so good. I used to tell you I worry for everything that should come. And when I call you, always seem to be home. I mean, the Scream movie, the first movie, was, was kind of built on the premise that not a lot of people had cell phones yet. It was 96. Cell phones hadn't really become that big of a, of a thing yet. Some people had cell phones, but not, not everybody. Now everybody has a smartphone. Um, so, you know, whenever I called, you always seem to be home. It was a great line because Sydney didn't do anything. She had friends, but she didn't really, like, go out a lot because of the trauma of her mother passing away a couple years before. Um... This is decent. This is really, really good. I like this. It is a lot slower. Um, and that, God, it's a six minute video, too. I yammer. Okay. Hello from the phone line. At least you picked it up this time. <laughs> I told to his party. We're killed from the start. The blood did spatter. Setting it up like the Adele video where, like, he's talking to her across from a table and the way this is shot with the, you know, the, uh, the sweeping, uh, background of, of him on the shore, kind of reminiscent of the Adele video. Uh, again, great production quality, guys. Really dig that. I, this one's not using many clips from the, from the movie either. I don't think it has used any yet. Uh, not that I've noticed anyway. So, again... Aspect ratio change again because the Adele song is a more modern song. It's only from a couple years ago. I parodied it a couple years ago. My version is about Star Wars Episode 7? Yeah, The Farce Awakens. Because it's on the EP called The Farce Awakens. Available now on Spotify and Bandcamp and all that stuff. Uh, the Spotify version is part of the uh, E-Anthology EP. Because I had a bunch of EPs and I put them all in one anthology. Every song on The Farce Awakens is called Kylo, though, because it's another it's a parody of a song called Hello or, or Stylo or something like that. Shameless plug over. Wow, sorry about that. I just went into buy my shit mode. Alright, anyway. Like I <laughs> Your head was down, she disappeared. Where are you? <laughs> So cynical and mean to talk about myself, but sorry, I know this is hell. Doing that Jiffy Pop from the first movie. You said you'll never make it out of this house where many murders happen. And I won't quit till your blood and guts are running down. 
He's watching the movie. That's genius. So hello from the <laughs> In the bathing suit with the mask on. That's just so funny. The slow-mo running. That the, the production quality on this video is so good and it's so funny. With like, he's watching the movies of Scream like he's reminiscing with home movies about the broken relationship. That is, that is genius. That is so damn funny. And uh, I will say, I have to appreciate the fact that they're not going with the character voice of Ghostface. Where he's using the voice changer so that people don't recognize his voice. He's singing in his voice. But if you sang the Adele song with the voice changer, it would sound really weird. So I appreciate that they did not do that. Um, it, it, it's interesting that they didn't do it, but I pre I'm glad that they didn't because it, it helps you, honestly, it helps you understand the song better. <laughs> in theory <laughs> that's so good in theory oh man <laughs> in theory you would have died from the start that's so good and the projector and the jiffy pop on fire so good the sink. Put that fire out. Don't drop the phone in there. Out in the field, singing your heart out. No need to pray and try to <laughs> Just the visual of sadly going down a slide in your bathing suit, but also the ghost face mask. Man, that's so funny. There's always something really funny about an adult-sized person pathetically sadly going down a slide number one because we weigh more than kids so going down slides without assistance just looks funny you know you're you're big and you're huh, going down the slide uh again something that i've used before in one of my videos for my song summertime jam uh but uh, it's it's just funny visual no matter what an adult on a slide sad it's, you're going to get a laugh out of it because of the dichotomy between the size of the person and the size of the slide and the fact that slides are usually associated with kids' things. It's just funny to me. It's always going to be funny to me. I, I you, that mask is going to be, like, so heavy. Bravo for filming right there. That's and a drone shot. So good. Well done, guys. Wow. Bravo. Hello. No one is available to take your call. <laughs> Please leave a message after the tone. And Matt of the Merkins as Ghostface. Matt appears in a bunch of, and actually I think all of their videos, at least all three that we've seen today. He was Freddy in two of the videos, I think. Um, and again, another full minute of credits after this one. Um, so bravo to everybody who worked on this. Bravo to the Merkins for making these. These are fantastic. And bravo to you for sticking around for 40 plus minutes of me reacting to three songs for Halloween. Anyway, 
that's all the time we have for this week. Uh, we've got possibly more Halloween videos coming up tomorrow as well, because comedy and Halloween go together so well. So many people release songs, kind of like I released a song this Halloween too. Anyway, like, share, comment, subscribe, consider supporting me on Patreon, check out the original videos uh, without me yammering all over them in the links in the description below, and we'll see you soon. Thanks very much. Bye. So I broke open wall bricks, roast chicken inside, and I said, this tastes like it's been sitting here since 1469. And still I don't see how this could be much worse. Now it's dark.